Johnny Dollar. This is Carol Carson, Mr. Dollar. Oh? You don't know me, and I'm sorry to be calling so late. What time is it, anyway? About 1 a.m. A friend of yours, Mr. Ralston, mentioned your name to me yesterday. What, Ralston? He said you were here in New York for the weekend and mentioned your hotel. Look, Miss uh, Carson, is it? Yes, Carol Carson. Yeah, it's nice talking to you and all that, but it is rather late. When I realized what had happened a few moments ago, you were the first person I thought of. Maybe... You can help me, Mr. Dollar. I need help badly. What's the trouble? I'm at the apartment of Everett Reed on East 67th. Could you come over? Any particular reason? Yes. I think I've just killed him, Mr. Dollar. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey. In the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the deadly doubt matter. Expense account item one, a dollar eighty, cab from my hotel to the apartment of Everett Reed on East 67th. Carol Carson was waiting for me at the door. She looked sort of dazed as she pointed to a body on the floor. He's dead, Mr. Dollar. Everett Reed? Let's see. Yes. This is his apartment. You said over the phone you thought you'd kill him. Well, he's dead, all right. That's not what I meant. I meant I thought I was the one who killed him. I'm not sure. Oh? I had... Oh, I don't know. Doesn't seem to matter. He's dead, I guess that's all that matters. He's dead. Get a hold of yourself, Carol. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not making much sense. I feel sort of funny, lightheaded. All right, yeah. Let us sit down. Thanks. Now, why don't you start at the beginning? All right. I came to see Everett tonight about 11 o'clock, I guess. He was a friend of yours? No. He sent for me and... I had to come. Mind telling me why? He insisted that I have a drink with him. Then I started to feel funny. How so? Dizzy. I had to get some air. You think there was something in the drink? There must have been. He didn't want me to leave. But I had to. What time was that? Around 11.30, I think. A little before, maybe. Go on. I wandered around the streets. I was in kind of a daze. How long were you wandering around? It seemed like a long time. Then what? I came back here to the apartment. I had a terrible headache. I remember walking in the door and... Well, that's all. That's all? What do you mean, that's all? That's all I remember. I must have passed out. When I came to, I was lying on the floor and that gun was near my hand. In front of me was... And I called you. That's all you can tell me? I'm afraid so. It isn't much, is it? It sure isn't. Mr. Dollar, I can't believe I killed him. I couldn't have... Now, look, Carol. You say you left this apartment a little before 11.30. The police medical examiner will be able to tell the approximate time of death. If you weren't here at that time... That's just it, Mr. Dollar. I don't know how long I was on the streets. It seemed like a long time, but... Oh, my head was... Spinning and everything was pretty hazy. Well, you've got to remember where you went. Try to think. Oh, it's no good. I... Wait. Coffee. A cup of coffee. You stopped somewhere for a cup of coffee? I think so. Where? I remember a neon sign on... On 3rd Avenue. Oh, you've got to do better than that. That's all I remember. Did you talk to anyone while you were walking around? I don't... 
Yes. Yes. Somebody was following me, I think. A man. He was following me for quite a while. He told me his name. Ted? No. Tom. Yes, it was Tom. What did he look like? Curly hair, I remember that. Dark eyes. Oh, look, that description fits thousands of guys in New York. I know, Mr. Dollar. The whole story, I... Well, it doesn't sound very convincing, does it? I called Detective Lieutenant Mike Tovich of Homicide, and he was there ten minutes later. He was still questioning her when I left. Item two, one dollar drinks for me while I thought about the whole deal. Of all the guys in New York, why did she have to pick on me? But, yeah, I'd do what I could to help her. Because that story of hers, it sounded so phony. It just might be true. Act two, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Act two, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the deadly doubt matter. Item three, two dollars and twenty cents, a telephone call to Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Yeah, Everett Reed had been insured by one of Universal's member companies, so I got myself officially assigned to the case. Then I went to work, checking out Carol Carson's story, what there was of it, and it wasn't much. All she'd remembered was wandering around the streets, getting a cup of coffee somewhere on 3rd Avenue, and being followed by a guy named Tom. I started checking every joint on 3rd Avenue from 60th to 70th Streets. An hour and a half later, I hit pay dirt at Eddie's Bar and Grill. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember all right. Carson. Carol Carson. Her name don't mean nothing, but from the description you give me, yeah, sure, I remember now. I remember thinking she looked kind of funny when she walked in, like she was in a daze or something. All right, all right. Now, what time was it when she came in here? I don't know, two or three hours ago. That's not good enough. Was it 11? 11.30? Midnight? Well, what? Well, maybe around midnight, maybe. Was she wrong? Yeah. You sure about that? Well, as far as I can remember, I kind of remember somebody in the doorway after she'd come in, but I didn't know if it was somebody with her or not. All right, what happened then? So she asked for a cup of coffee, so I poured it and set it down in front of her, so she left. She what? Yeah, got up and left, still acting sort of funny. I see. How much of a time can you account for then? Huh? I mean, how long was she here in your place? No more than about one minute, Mac. Oh, great. I am for a dollar eighty camp fare to police headquarters and Lieutenant Mike Tovich in homicide. Look, Johnny, you're not trying to tell me I should buy an alibi like Carol Carson's, are you? So it is pretty vague, Mike. Vague enough to be true. At least she was telling the truth about going into that joint on 3rd Avenue for a cup of coffee. So she's covered for one minute out of two hours. Two hours? She said she went to Reed's apartment about 11 o'clock. Right. The medical examiner says time of Reed's death was between 11.30 and 12.30. She called you at 1 o'clock. But if she can prove she was out of that apartment for that hour... She's only proved she was out of it for a minute plus the time it took to get to 3rd Avenue and back. Say, five minutes each way. That would still give her plenty of time to kill him. But if we could find this guy named Tom, she says she was, that was following her around. Maybe he could prove she was out of the apartment during the time of the murder. Oh, sure. That was a real helpful description she gave us. Curly hair and dark eyes. Yeah, yeah. Look, Johnny, so you're taking a liking to her. That's too bad, but don't let it make a fool out of you. Mike, did Carol tell you why she went to Reed's apartment? No, no, she wouldn't talk about it. She also wouldn't explain a lump she has on the side of her head. Lump she has? Yeah, we think she got it fighting with Reed. What do you know about him? Bad boy. A big gambler. And the way we heard, he'd been winning pretty big lately. Hmm. Maybe somebody he won from couldn't pay off. Except with a bullet. Yeah, maybe anything, Johnny. Prove it, and I'll listen. Who did Reed run around with, you know? Usual crowd, Johnny. Jack Vissel, that outfit. Vissel, huh? Now, if Reed won a lot of money from him, like I say, Johnny, anything you can prove. Yeah, yeah. Come in. Mr. Tovich? That's right. I'm Larry Bowman. I want to know what's going on with Carol Carson. Oh? What's it to you, Mr. Bowman? Well, she's my fiance, and you've got her locked up. That's right. Suspicion of murder. Oh, that's ridiculous. She didn't kill anybody, and you know it. Look, Mr. Bowman, if I knew it, she wouldn't be locked up, would she? 
Now, maybe you can tell us why she went to this Everett Reed's apartment last night. I don't know why she went, and I don't propose to ask her either. I trust the lieutenant. And if she went to see him, she had good reason. But, but Carol's not the kind who could kill anybody. You must have realized that just talking to her. The main thing that I realize is that my personal opinion is beside the point, Bowman. Look, the thing we need to know is if Carol was away from Reed's apartment for almost an hour and a half, like she seems to think she was, walking around the streets. Oh, why didn't you say that sooner? I, I can prove she was. Oh. Uh, I was with her. Uh huh. Funny, she didn't mention it. She was uh, probably confused. You sure you're not the one who was confused? Now, look, I tell you, I was with her. Okay. Where were you? On the street. What street? Well, I don't remember. 60, 68th Street, I think. That's not the street Carol says she was on. As I say, she was probably confused. Where'd you go? To, uh, to a bar. Where'd you have to drink? I go. Well, Carol, too? Well, sure, why not? Oh, you're fighting a losing battle, Bowen. Carol says she had a cup of coffee on 3rd Avenue and that a guy named Tom was following her. Now, listen, you I... You told us enough, Bowman. I can't blame you too much for trying, I guess, but it won't work. You weren't with Carol and you know it. I know she didn't kill him. You mean you hope she didn't, when it comes to knowing. Right now, every bit of evidence we got says she did. And we've got nothing that says she didn't. Johnny Dollar in a moment. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Deadly Doubt Matter. <laughs> Item five thirty cents, coffee for Larry Bowman and me at a little joint around the corner. Lieutenant Tobish can talk about evidence until he's blue in the face, Dollar. Carol's not a killer. You prove that and Tobish will be the first to listen. But cooking up phony alibis for Carol is not going to help any. Okay, okay, so it was a stupid thing to do. But I can't just stand by and do nothing. Don't you have any other leads you can follow up? One, maybe. Well, what is it? Reed was a gambler. Could be somebody was losing big to him. Well, Carol's my fiance. I know she doesn't have that kind of money. Anyway, she doesn't gamble. I wasn't thinking about Carol. Who then? Jack Vissel, for instance. We found out Reed's been seen with Vissel several times lately. You got to question him about it? I may as well. After all, at this point, we got nothing to lose. You're barking up a wrong tree, Dollar. What reason would I have to kill Reed? Could be a real good reason, Vessel. Maybe you lost money to him gambling. Some nights you win, some nights you lose. So maybe you lost more nights than you won. So maybe you owe Reed some money. Oh? That could be the motive. Look, Dollar, why don't you take your crazy theory someplace else? Yeah, I owed Reed money. I owed him all the two bits. Now, is that enough to bump him off? So, I started making the rounds along 3rd Avenue again. But I got nowhere. Nobody remembered seeing her, and nobody remembered the guy named Tom, the one she told me had been following her. Two hours later, I gave up. I was beat. I went back in my room and flopped on the bed. Yeah? Okay, okay. Yeah? Uh, Johnny Dollar? That's right. Who are you? Well, I'm the guy you've been looking for. What? My name's Tom. I ring a bell? It sure does. Are you the one who was walking around the streets with Carol Carson? That's right. I'm her alibi. So I bust my neck trying to find you, and it ends up with you finding me. Well, I read in the papers it looked bad for Carol unless they found the guy who was with her. You didn't show up any too soon, believe me, brother. How long were you with her? Oh, I figure at least an hour. I kept following her, and uh, once in a while she'd stop and talk, but uh, she seemed kind of dazed. Yeah, apparently, Reed put something in her drink. Anyway, I finally gave up. I uh, figured if it was that tough to get acquainted, what's the use? But you're willing to swear you were with her for an hour. Why, at least from around 11.30 to after 12.30. That clears her. Come on. <laughs> Item 6, a dollar eighty camp fare to headquarters. Tom repeated his statement, and Carol identified Tom as the man who'd been following her. So, it looked like it was all over. I... I 
guess I'll never be able to thank you enough, Johnny. I... Well, if it hadn't been for uh, you... Well, let's, let's just say I'm the stubborn type, girl. Once I believed your story, I had to follow through on it. Oh, it's hard to realize I'm free. It's been like a bad dream. Yeah. I'll bet Larry Bowman's glad it's over, too. Have you called him yet? No, I'll call him from my apartment. Johnny, all I can say is thanks again. Carol took a cab to her apartment. I started back into the building, and then, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted another cab pulling away from the curb, following Carol's. And it was Tom. I figured I'd better join that procession. I tagged along to Carol's apartment. Inside, I could hear voices. The door was unlocked. Carol was in the process of handing over some money to Tom. Johnny! Yeah. Looks like I got here just in time to witness the payoff. So you bought yourself an alibi, Carol. No. Now, look, Dollar. You better stay out of it. Carol, I got to hand it to you. You really had me fooled. Well, you don't understand, Johnny. Don't be a sucker, Dollar. Cut yourself in on the pie. I'm willing to have a partner. What are you talking about? Well, last night when I followed Carol back to Reed's apartment, just as I was leaving, I spotted somebody coming down the fire escape. I followed him, found who he was and where he lived. Then when the story came out in the papers, I realized I knew who the killer was. So I figured I could make some dough out of it. But not as long as Carol was in jail. Johnny, just now when he wanted money to keep him from telling the police, I... Well, I didn't know what to do. I thought if I gave him what I had, it would keep him satisfied until I could figure out. Larry, no! No! I spun around, but it was too late. Oh, oh it kicked the open door. It struck Larry's arm, deflected his shot. Before he could shoot again, I nailed him. Johnny, are you all right? Yeah. Larry Bowman's the killer. I was afraid of that right from the start. You see, Larry'd been gambling with Reed and losing to him. I tried to make him stop, but he wouldn't. Finally, he lost more than he could pay. So you went to Reed's apartment to try and square it, huh? Reed told me maybe something could be worked out. When he put something in my drink, I realized what he meant. That's why I got out. And Larry entered the apartment when you were away, killed Reed, slugged you when you came back and planted a gun on you. I, I guess so. I wasn't sure until Tom told me he'd seen Larry climb down that fire escape. At first, I just... I just couldn't believe that Larry would... How do you figure a thing like that, Johnny? How do you figure it? I didn't try to answer that one because I didn't have an answer. It just, it just isn't any. Item 8, $13.40, incidentals and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $41 even. Yeah, Larry Bowman's gambling was a big fat mistake. First with Everett Reed, then in trying to frame Carol. I guess that's the trouble with gambling. You push your luck too far. And sooner or later, you're bound to lose. Yours truly, Johnny Duff. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a doting dowager who sets me out on the wildest case I ever handled. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, salute station KRMG in Tulsa, Oklahoma. KRMG is our newest affiliate station and serves nearly a million families in the Southwest. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Today's story was written by Robert Stanley. Heard in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Julius Matthews, Paul Duboff, James McCallion, Alan Reed, and Frank Gerstel. Join us next week for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. <laughs>